In one of the previous video, I talked about D3JS, which is pretty much overkill for a regular day-to-day -day life, charts and graphs that you want to import in your dashboard for web applications, maybe mobile application. So what can be the solution for lightweight and easier when you want charts? The simple and easy solution can be Chart.js. And why do I recommend Chart.js? I recommend Chart.js because of the three simple reasons. And of course, D3JS can handle everything that Chart.js does, but sometimes you don't need such kind of heavy duty tools and you just want to get away with the task in the hand. My reason number one for picking up Chart.js is simply lightweight. I know D3JS is amazing and there are a lot of fan out there. But sometimes you need something which is super lightweight and doesn't compromise on anything like speed, page optimization or anything at all. So in that case, probably Chart.js is going to be one of the best options. My second reason for picking up Chart.js is their documentation. Their documentation is probably one of the best which I've seen over the internet. Definitely D3JS is amazing, it's very detailed, but sometimes, you know what? You need very specific examples. You can just copy paste, just change the data and just can start working with that. And Chart.js does exactly the same. And last but not the least is the scale and size. Chart.js doesn't offer you billions and gazillions of extraordinary chart which most people don't even need. It is very small library and you can just import it and it just works out of the box. So that's one of the reasons I always say that Chart.js is probably that you really need instead of D3JS. So in this video, let's quickly go ahead and get started with Chart.js. I'm going to give you a quick example. I'm going to also walk you through how you can read the documentation quickly and get friendly with the Chart.js. So this video will act as a great starting point of getting indulged into Chart.js. So let's get started. One of the reason that I love Chart.js is because how simple it is and now they even allow to animate this stuff. So let's quickly have a look onto the website and definitely we are going to explore their documentation together. We'll create a quick uh, prototype kind of a thing to explore their documentation. So here on their website, chartjs.org, we can see that they have flip, a simple and flexible chart. And one thing I love about it is we do have just eight type of chart, which most people are gonna be using in their day-to-day -day life. And that's all what they do. Everything is super responsive because it's in the canvas and I just love it. Let's quickly have a look on the samples because I think they have one of the best documentation. So probably you are interested in the vertical charts and this is how we look and you just say, hey, that's kind of a perfect chart for my dashboard, whatever I'm creating. Or probably you want something like stacked group and you say, hey, this is the one I want. So how you can, can get started with that, obviously visit the documentation. So we need to do a little bit of the experimentation with the documentation process to, to see that how it works, how it looks like, what are the options available and how we can do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my VS code up here and I need to just uh, fix it up on the screen. Okay, that's very big. Come on, get smaller, please. Okay, there we go. Looks pretty good. And now we can do is just I have opened up in a project uh, kind of a folder and I have got an index.html. So the first thing that we're going to do is fire up an HTML document. We're going to hit a, ca a tab a couple of times and we're going to just say uh, chart. Uh, JS maybe. So there we go. Now apart from that, we are not going to write anything. We are going to just peek into documentation first. So here's the installation step. It's actually ridiculously easy. Uh, you can see that in the script part, we have got pretty basic con uh, contributions going on. So let's quickly have a look on the installation first. We have variety of options for going on the installation. We directly can integrate the CDN as well. So that is nice. Now let's go back and click on getting started. So first and foremost, we need a canvas. Let's give it an ID of my chart. We are directly copying and pasting from documentation. One of the quick way of quickly exploring the documentation. So the body, let's go ahead and get that. Okay, makes sense. And then we need a chart JS CDN as well. Probably you want to use NPM in case you are messing around with a bigger project or appropriate project. I'm going to load it up very first, although it's not a good idea to keep your scripts at the very head because it's going to take a lot of time. But in this case, we're just exploring, so it's pretty okay. Now, the next thing is uh, just copying and pasting this stuff and exploring that what it actually does. So I'm going to go back on to this one, body and 
just below that. Now, usually I like to keep my script files into a separate file, but right now we're just exploring the stuff. So in just one quick video, it's totally fine to have it directly here. Again, I don't recommend it, but you know, still I'm doing it. So we're gonna go into the script tags and we're gonna just paste it down. So let's see what's going on in here. First and foremost, it's looking for a get element by ID. Makes sense, we, given, we have given an ID of my char and then get a get context. So get context always needs to be 2D. I tried it out, 3D doesn't work yet on the web. And then we can just define a chart object from this chart class, which takes two parameter. The first one is the CTX, means the document that you have captured through get element by ID. And then you need to pass on a big gigantic object, which consists of a variety of things. For example, we do, uh, we are interested right now in the line chart, surely we can change that. We will change that in a minute. And the important part is data. Let me save that first, okay. The next one is data, which is a big gigantic object. And the first parameter that we have passed on is labels. So what do you want to get that labels? Data set, okay, that's important. In the data set, we are passing on an array and further an object. So we have got label, we have got background color, we have got border color, and we have got finally the data. The option seems to be empty. Okay, makes sense. So now let's just save that and fire up our live server. So there we go. So this looks pretty okay, pretty okay. And the red color is pretty amazing in that. So let's go ahead and explore it further that what more we can do. So just now we can see that we have a line chart. So do we have other charts as well? Now we haven't looked into documentation. We are just experimenting on our own. So let's just say I want to char have a bar chart. Let's go ahead and look at that. So there we go. Okay, so bar chart is there. Now definitely we do have pie chart as well, but in this case the data set actually uh, doesn't make sense to have a pie chart of the same colors. We might want to provide different set of colors in that, but definitely we can see that it just works nicely and I just love it by default. So let's go ahead and change it back to the bar chart and explore documentation. So it's a very important thing. You just assume a few things and try them out and just figure it out on the go. That's one of the part of reading the documentation. Okay, so now what we can do. Okay, let's go for the bar chart here. So we can see in the left hand side, we have got a lot of chart options. So these are the options we can provide. So notice here that type is bar and then we have options. And in the options, we can see we have a lot of things going on. Uh, there we go, a couple of usage options is here. So we can provide scalings, bar percentage, bar thickness. So this is the option which is right now empty, but we definitely can use it for more, providing more options. Just copy and paste and we're gonna just get to know. Now one thing which I want to go for now is the interactions. And in that I'm gonna go for events. So we can see we have a couple of events that we can use, events on hover, on click. Uh, the bottom one actually requires you to pass on a function, probably a callback function to do something like changing the data set or something. Would love to try that out. And let's just see what the documentation says. It says if you do a by default on a given option of events click, then it's probably gonna do something. So let's go ahead and try that out in the options. There we go, hit enter, there we go. So I've set an event which says click, okay. I'm gonna go back here. And when I click on this, this shows me data. So that's pretty good. I would love to actually get it on the mouse over. So let's just go ahead and explore that. So in the events, we do have a string of array that we have to pass on. So we have got a click. We definitely can provide multiple one, but I'm interested in this mouse move. So I think that's gonna be the one I'm gonna try it out. So instead of the click, mouse move, save that, go back onto our browser. And uh, there we go. So this is the one I would prefer to just click on the mouse and see more details. Right now the details are uh, like pretty bare minimalistic, but hey, that shows the most important information. And we can pretty be easy about that we have got a label, my first data set, and then we have got January, February, March. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. So that's how you explore actually your documentation and figure it out that these are the labels going up there. So this is how we do that. Okay. So there we go, this is your basic example. Surely we have all other options that how we can configure colors, how we can load up even images. One thing that is pretty bizarre is how it loads up images. Not bizarre actually, it's pretty freaking amazing. So let me show you how it does with the images. I was exploring in the color and found out that we can use patterns and gradients as well. For that, let me just zoom it here. We can use an image object here, then provide a source and whatever you want to do on the load of the image. I didn't want to have a load of the image directly. I would rather create a different stuff with that. So let me go ahead and try to just do this. And this is pretty, uh, 
pretty amazing. So first and foremost, what it needs is we need to get this fill pattern thing on to repeat. So let's go ahead and copy that and go back here. So this needs to go uh, just before you create this chart, I guess. Uh, yes, before we create the chart object here, we need to go ahead and paste that out. So we're gonna go just below here and there we go. Now this fill pattern requires you to pass on an image and we need to create an image as well. So the first two lines are here to create images. Uh, definitely it would be better if we just go for img.onload and after loading the image we are doing all this stuff but right now we are not much worried on to that part. So let's go up here and uh, what I want to do is just when I captured this and even before that I would like to load this image. So what is going on? I'm creating an image from a class image. That's how I'm assuming based on experience just. And then we are providing a source. Right now example.com doesn't exist. So we need uh, definitely an image. So one of my favorite website to load up this images is Pexels. Feel free to use any of them. I know these images are not very practical to be used up. Uh, probably I'll just use this one. So I'm gonna just right click and copy image address. And I'm going to replace it with my address and this gives a really amazing patterns in this case it's not going to look good but let's just save that go back up here and uh, okay we are missing something okay looks like we are having image we're able to provide the document image repeat okay we are not still having this fill pattern being used so let's just see how we can use that let's go into the documentation again okay so we are having this fill pattern and in the background color, we have to use this fill pattern. Makes sense. Let's go up here and go into the background color. And we are going to replace that by our object that we have created called as fill pattern. Save that. Now let's see the bizarre moment. Not bizarre. It's good. There we go. So this is how you get. Now this is the cloud that's coming up on the repeat pattern. But definitely I think uh, if you can use some of the gradients or maybe some other things uh, it can be pretty amazing and that can be a very unique chart so definitely i highly recommend you to check out the documentation part of the chart js they're pretty amazing to use and i would say 10 on 10 on their documentation part as well pretty good so i think this video is going to give you quite a good in-depth about how to use chart js in your next project and i can just wait what you're going to building up what you're going to build up with this chart js I hope you have enjoyed this small video about exploration of the Chart.js documentation and little bit pieces about how to read the documentation and play around with it. In case you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that I can keep up coming with amazing content at this channel. And that's it for this one. I'm gonna surely, surely catch you up in the next video. Without you in, I just can't